We would usually look at a, a clinical trial involving um, drugs that otherwise we struggle to access. So uh, examples of this would be things like romidepsin. Um, we would be looking at um, other drugs such as um, uh, brentuximab, although that's much more widely available um, and accessible. Um, and then other um, newer agents such as the PD-1 and PD-L1 um, blockade, uh, such as um, a trial that we have coming up uh, using um, avalimumab. Um, so, you know, these are the sort of agents that we, we would be thinking of in this setting um, when patients are uh, not responding to standard treatment, uh, particularly chemotherapy agents. So there's a number of things. I mean, a lot of the pathway blockade um, inhibitors that we've been hearing about this morning, very interesting. Um, there's a number of other new drugs, um, you know, pralotraxate and other uh, drugs like this. So um, there's a whole host of things that we could bring in. Uh, it's really sort of looking forward to, to what we can, we can then access. Yeah. So in our um, patient population of relapsed and refractory uh, PTCL, um, we're seeing, um, as you would imagine, um, numerous lines of therapy being delivered. Uh, so patients will often go on to, uh, to see um, four or five or more lines of therapy. Um, we have a high uh, relapse rate at some duration through the treatment. Uh, so we're always on the lookout for uh, novel agents, um, you know, additional lines of therapy, and, and hopefully something that is more tol tolerable than um, typical uh, chemotherapy, uh, given the patient's um, often sort of advanced age and comorbidities and inability to tolerate that therapy.